everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated book releases of 2022. I quite literally have over 80 books to talk about today, which is absolutely insane. I'm pretty sure when I did this last year for 2021 releases, I had around 40 books. So this is going to be twice as many and I don't want it to be twice as long. So we're gonna be going through quick. I'm not gonna be reading full synopses. I'm pretty much just gonna tell you why it's on my radar, maybe the quick little blurb or the vibe that I pick up from the book because I'm not trying to be here all day and I'm sure you don't wanna be here all day. I'm also going to be categorizing these books into different genres. So we're going to start with thrillers. I have the most to talk about in the thriller category. We'll talk about horror books. We'll talk about fantasy books. We'll talk about romance books. And then I also am going to have like an other category for some literary fiction or speculative stuff or just like the random sci-fi here or there where I have the least amount of books to talk about that just don't fit in my main categories. I'll also make those chapters in the video so you can jump around and skip around to wherever you're most interested in. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the books because this is going to be a lot. <laughs> so we'll get started talking about my most anticipated thriller book releases for 2022. Starting with January, we'll start with a book that I have already read because it came out as an early edition in Book of the Month for December, and that is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is a story about a woman who grew up with her father who was a serial killer. He's put away in prison now. When she was a young girl, he was murdering girls in the town. And now it's many years later, she's all grown up. She's still in that town and it's happening again. Teenage girls are going missing and showing up murdered. And she's trying to figure out how she's connected to it all, what's going on and who's doing it, if it's a copycat or what's going on. This is this author's debut novel. It is very much just a kind of standard thriller. It's not a blow your socks off type of thriller, but it was a pretty fun time. I ended up giving this one four stars and it is being adapted into either a movie or a show by Emma Stone. So would definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested in some adaptations. The next two books are available through Book of the Month for the month of January. So the first one is the one that I made my Book of the Month and that is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. I haven't read this one yet. I haven't gotten my book in the mail yet, but this is the same author as The Wife Upstairs and also The Ex Hex, which she wrote under a pen name. Didn't really like The Ex Hex, but The Wife Upstairs was decent enough for me when I read it. I gave that a four star last year, but it's probably more like a three star read if I think about it. So I'm really not expecting much with this one, but it does have some island vibes. It says it is a deliciously wicked gothic suspense set on an isolated Pacific Island with a dark history for fans of Lucy Foley and Ruth Ware. And I'm a fan of all the things in that sentence, including the authors. So I don't know, I'm expecting this to probably be like a three star. So maybe if I don't go in expecting to love it, I'll like it better. But based off of what I know of Rachel Hawkins stuff in the past, I don't think it's going to be the next best thriller, but I think it'll be a fun enough time. And then the next one is an add on option for book of the month. So I made this one an add on and that is The Maid by Nita Prose. I have seen this one described as Eleanor Oliphant solves a murder mystery, basically based off of the type of character. It's a clue like locked room mystery with a heartwarming journey of the spirit, exploring what it means to be the same as everyone else and yet entirely different and reveals that all mysteries can be solved through connection to the human heart. So it sounds like a really nice little cozy mystery with an interesting main character. I really liked Eleanor Oliphant. It's completely fine when I read that a long time ago. So I'm expecting to really enjoy this one, especially with it being a locked room mystery. Those are my favorite. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Next up also coming out in January is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. This author wrote a book in the past year that was called If I Disappear and I've heard terrible reviews of it. It was like a podcast type thriller where this podcast host goes missing and a listener goes to find her. I heard so many bad reviews that I never even picked it up, but I'm interested in giving this one a try. I really think the cover of this one looks super cool. It follows a wealthy couple who invites self-made success stories to live in their guest house and then they conspire to ruin their lives. After all, there's nothing worse than a bootstrapper. So it sounds um, kind of like that reminds me of Samantha Downing's style of writing where you're following characters who suck, but it sounds like it'll be fun, especially because it just sounds like another kind of rich people drama, which is always fun. And then lastly, in January, I've had this book pre-ordered for so long. I'm so excited for it. And it is called The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. This is about a woman who receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm. And there is nothing I love more than deadly snowstorms and unexpected visitors in isolated locations. So it just 
just looks so fun. The main character is also a true crime writer, which sounds like it'll be fun. This one's coming out right at the end of January. I wish it was coming out earlier because it would be the perfect book to read for a winter ween. But either way, I'm gonna pick it up like as soon as it comes out because I'm really excited for it. Moving into February, there are only a couple of thrillers that are on my radar so far for February. The first one is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Lucy Foley is also the author of The Guest List, which was one of my favorite thrillers in 2020. So I'm super excited to pick up another book from her. This follows a woman who needs a fresh start. She's broke. And then her half brother is like, okay, come move in with me in this nice apartment in Paris. You can crash at my place for a little bit. And then he's not there. He's missing. Um, and so then she tries to figure out what's going on in the building, if it's someone nearby and what happened to her brother. So this one actually sounds like a lot of fun. I'm seeing pretty good early reviews for it as well. So this will definitely be one that I am instantly picking up as soon as it comes out. And then the other thriller coming out in February that I'm excited for is Fake by Erica Katz. This author also wrote this book called The Boys Club, which I did not read, but I heard pretty good things about. And this is a book set in the high stakes world of art forgery. There is this artist named Emma Can, who is a fake. She's a forger, an artist who specializes in 19th century paintings. She isn't a criminal. Her copies are commissioned by museums and ultra wealthy collectors protecting their investments. And then an art collector extends an invitation to her. She thinks it's gonna be a way out, but she is not prepared for what comes next. And she gets swept into this dangerous world. So this one, just from the sounds of it, is reminding me of Who is Maud Dixon, which was one of my favorite thrillers in 2021. So I'm super excited to check this one out. And then moving into March, the first thriller I have to talk about is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I read one book from Simone St. James in the past. It was the, uh, what was that book called? The Sundown Motel. I That just like completely escaped my brain. But that book was pretty good. There were definitely some flaws in it, but I liked the overall kind of spooky paranormal vibes of it. So I'm excited for this one too. In this one, you're following a true crime blogger who gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold case slayings. It looks like this one also has dual timelines and two different characters you're following, which is something that I think Simone St. James does often. And this one also has a paranormal element in it, I think. So I'm looking forward to giving this author another try. Next up, another author that I've read from before. This is actually an author duo, and that is Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen's The Golden Couple, which is coming out in March. This one follows a therapist who is working with this married couple who seems like the golden couple, but then the woman ends up cheating on the man. So they go to this therapist and then crazy things happen from there. When I've read from them in the past, I read An Anonymous Girl. I think that's the only one I've read so far. I know a lot of people are like hit or miss with this author duo and don't particularly love their stuff, but I'm interested in giving them another shot. And I really like the potential of the psychological element being really interesting. So I'm gonna pick it up. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Next up, a book with cult vibes. That is This Might Hurt by Stephanie Robel. This is the same author who wrote Darling Rose Gold, which I did not read because it just didn't sound original enough for me to be interested in reading it because I've already heard the Gypsy Rose story many a time. But a lot of people really like that book, so I'm interested in picking up this one from the author. It says it is a dark, thrilling novel about two sisters, one trapped in the clutches of a cult and the other in a web of her own lies. Next up in March is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. I really liked the last book I read from Peter Swanson, so I'm hoping this one goes along those same veins and not like the previous stuff I've read from Peter Swanson. This one says, if you're on the list, someone wants you dead. It is a heart pounding story of nine strangers who receive a cryptic list with their names on it and then begin to die in highly unusual circumstances. I just really like the idea of a sort of cheesy thriller. Like that just sounds a little gimmicky to me where there's this letter going around and your name's on it and you're gonna die. So I'm hoping this one works out for me like Every Value Break did. Next up is The Club by Ellery Lloyd. Ellery Lloyd is an author duo. I believe it's a husband and wife. They wrote this book called People Like Her last year and I really did not like that book. I'm pretty sure it was their first book that they wrote together. They might be writing separately otherwise, but I'm pretty sure that was the first book they wrote together and it just felt really amateur to me. It felt like it needed a lot of editing. I just wish it would have been done in such a different way. I think the ending of the book should have been where the story started and then it went from there. I just had a lot of complaints with that, but I'm interested in giving them another chance because I could see some potential in their work. This one is said to be a smart and sinister murder mystery set in the secretive world of exclusive celebrity clubs where the A-list members and the staff who serve them all have something to hide. 
it's really interesting how they're writing about celebrities and just like the concept of being a famous person because People Like Her was about a really famous influencer. So I wonder if they have some kind of like background in that. It says that she's a journalist and editor. She was a content director of Elle magazine and he is an author of two previous novels. So I don't know why they keep writing about famous people, but hopefully I end up enjoying this one much more than people like her. And then the last one I have for March is more of a cozy mystery, I think, than a thriller. It's called Under Lock and Skeleton Key by Gigi Pandian. And this is the start of a new series. It says, known for her wonderfully addictive characters, multiple award-winning author Gigi Pandian introduces her newest heroine in this heartfelt series debut. Under Lock and Skeleton Key layers stunning architecture with mouthwatering food and an ode to classic locked room mysteries that will leave readers enchanted. I love a good classic locked room mystery. I don't love when food is in books. So I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. I didn't really notice that until right now. So we'll have to see about that, but I'm still gonna keep trying to get into cozy mysteries. I haven't had a ton of success in the past, but I don't know, maybe one day there'll be one that I really enjoy. Moving into April, the first thriller on my radar is The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. I have not gotten to read anything from Sally Hepworth yet, but I'm super interested in her stuff. I really love the Australian covers of her books and I really wanna figure out a way to own those before I read a lot of her books, which I know is just like the most vain, petty, weird thing, but those are the best covers that exist. So I really just need to figure that out. But anyway, this is a story about this man who's getting married again. Uh, the only problem is he's still married to his first wife, even though she is in a care facility for dementia. But he'll take care of that easily by divorcing her, even if his adult daughters protest. And then it sounds like the adult daughters are determined to get to the truth about their family's secrets, the new wife closing in and who their father really is. So it sounds like a little bit of a family drama. And maybe if I really like this one, then I'll get over my stupid want for the Australian covers and just start picking up more of Sally Hepworth's books. Next up, one I am super excited about is I'll Be You by Janelle Brown. Janelle Brown has not missed for me yet. I loved both of the other books I've read from this author. I read Watch Me Disappear and Pretty Things last year. And so I'm super excited that she has another book coming out next year. This one says it follows two identical twin sisters and former child actors who have grown apart until one disappears and the other is forced to confront the secrets they've kept from each other in this twisty thriller. Sounds interesting, but I just love Janelle Brown's writing. I love her characters, her atmosphere. Sphere. She has a very like literary fiction style of writing with mystery and thriller elements infused in it. So super excited for this one. Next in April is Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. I read Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough in 2021 finally and really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to another book coming out from her. It says it is a twisty mind bending thriller that follows a woman who is worried that her crippling insomnia is a sign that she's slowly going insane like the mother she's worked so hard to leave in her past. Sounds like it's got some family dynamics some like mother-daughter dynamics, which I always find to be super interesting in thrillers. And if it's anything like Behind Her Eyes, it might have a crazy twist, which would be a lot of fun. Next up in April, I am the queen of second chances because really this is like a fourth or fifth chance. I'm gonna be reading An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. I have not loved a Taryn Fisher book yet. I've read several books from Taryn Fisher and I just don't like her endings. It's always the endings of her books that throw me off. There's always like a concept I enjoy or the hooks me in the beginning and then just ends up tailspinning into some kind of chaos that I just am not here for. This one, I don't even know what it's about. It says it's a seething gut punch of a thriller that can only have sprung from the fiendish brain of Taryn Fisher, one of the most cunning writers of our time. I'm not sure if cunning is the word that I would use, but she is definitely someone with a fiendish brain. It looks like it follows a girl's weekend in Vegas. Then one of the girls gets a text message. Someone has her. Yeah, I don't really know. We're just gonna go into this, no expectations, and um, it's either gonna be a train wreck or it'll finally be a redemption. <laughs> and finally in April is the New Neighbor by Carter Wilson. I have not read from this author before. I've never even heard of this author, but it compares their writing to Megan Miranda and Alex Michaelides, which I think is an interesting pairing to put those two authors together. This says it's a chilling psychological thriller about Barry, New Hampshire, a standalone story with crossover to his previous novel, The Dead Husband. So that's not gonna mean anything to me, but it's about a guy who wins the lottery. He's the superstitious type. He's been playing the lottery forever and he's never won until now on the day of his wife's funeral. He struggles to cope with these two sudden extremes, but I guess he gets over it because then he ends up getting a nice house. He has all this money, but someone will stop at nothing to get what they want. So it sounds like someone comes up from his past to try to like ruin the second chance at life that he has. I don't know. I don't even remember how this came up on my radar. 
but it's got a lot of praise. Stuart Turton has a blurb on here talking about how good it is, which is probably how I came across this. S.A. Cosby blurbed it, Catherine McKenzie. So I'm interested to at least give it a chance. Moving into June, the only thriller book I have on my radar right now in June is The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile. This is a sharply thrilling read that is an unexpectedly twisty literary adventure that examines the complicated nature of friendship and shows us that words can be the most treacherous weapons of all. It sounds like this is a bit of a locked room mystery because it's set at this reading room in the Boston Public Library, which is really quiet until they hear a woman's terrified scream and then all these people end up getting together it's four strangers who have to sit there quietly to pass the time but each has his or her own reasons for being in the reading room that morning it just happens that one is a murderer so it sounds really really good and i'm super excited for this one going into july the first book i have on my radar is the retreat by sarah pierce this is actually the second book in a series this is the follow-up to the sanatorium by this author which was a reese witherspoon book club pick last year that I read and enjoyed quite a bit. It's basically just like a detective series is what this is becoming. So there's nothing to like spoil the events of the first book in knowing what it's about. It's just following the detective who was in the first book, going out to an island getaway and then getting caught up in another mystery and trying to solve it. I'm honestly not expecting to love it because I didn't really remember loving her as a main character, the detective, but I like island thrillers and this is like an eco wellness retreat. So I think the atmosphere is going to be good. I think that was my favorite part of the same sanatorium too as I really liked the setting and the atmosphere. That one was at the sanatorium that had turned into this luxury wellness retreat out in the snowy mountains. So really going to this one more for the vibes than anything. Next up another sequel. This is just really rare for thrillers and me. And this one is The Family Remains which is the sequel to The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I really love The Family Upstairs when I first read that book back in like 2018 or 2019 whenever it came out. But I know a lot of people don't like it and I haven't really liked anything else from Lisa Jewell since then. So I I don't know how this is going to go, but I definitely want to read the follow-up to this. It's going to be another psychological thriller about twisted marriages, fractured families, and deadly obsessions. I might want to do a reread of The Family Upstairs if it's going to be super connected. I don't know. If anybody knows, let me know. Do you think I need to do a reread? Do you think I can go into this one with absolutely no memory of that book? <laughs> next up, talk about The Queen of Second Chances. We're going to be reading another Riley Sager next year, and that is The House Across the Lake. This one is basically The Woman in the Window, except it's set on a lake, which I think is more of a classic classic retelling of uh, maybe Rear Window or something where there's an unreliable character who's stuck in their house who witnesses something happening that they don't know if they can trust if it happened or not and nobody's believing them and they might be swept up in some kind of crime story. Fingers freaking crossed that Survive the Night was just a blip and a mistake and that this one's gonna be much better because we all know how Survive the Night was, okay? We, we don't want a repeat of that. Hopefully this will be a redemption for Riley Sager. Next up, another thriller author that I'm a little bit iffy on. Ruth Ware has another book coming out. It's called The It Girl. This is an unput downable mystery following a woman on the search for answers a decade after her friend's murder. I think mostly Ruth Ware books are just kind of like a fun comfort read for me. I've read literally everything she's come out with, so I'm gonna keep picking her stuff up. I'm not expecting it to blow me away and be the best thing I've ever read, but hopefully it's at least a fun time. Moving into August, we have Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus. I've read a little bit from Karen M. McManus and I think her stuff's just fun. This is another, I think, YA thriller that follows these friends. Uh, four years ago, this girl left St. Ambrose School. So it's like a kind of private academy, it sounds like. There's murder, there's mystery, there's a bunch of teenagers. Someone got away with murder and the murderer's still there. So it just kind of sounds like classic Karen M. McManus stuff. I think her writing's just fun. I think it'll be a good time. Next up, we have Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I love the first thing I read from Alice. Feeney. I hated the next thing I read from her. Hopefully I'm going to love this one. It says it's an all-consuming tale of psychological suspense with a spectacular twist, which is kind of what I've come to expect with her stuff. Daisy Darker's family were as dark as dark can be. When one of them died, all of them lied and pretended not to see. Sounds like it's going to be a family drama and someone in that family is probably a killer. So hopefully this one's good. Hopefully it's got nice atmosphere. The cover looks nice. One can only hope. <laughs> next up in August is The Blame Game by Sandy Jones. This one follows a psychologist who specializes in domestic abuse. She tries not to get overly invested in her clients' lives, but after helping a middle-aged man named Jacob make the decision to leave his wife, she begins to worry that she's gone too far. On the morning of his first session after his escape, doors that Naomi is sure she locked have been mysteriously left open and Jacob's client file is missing. Then another client approaches her for assistance in leaving behind her abusive husband and Naomi once again is unable to turn aside someone in need. But are the missing papers and unlocked doors symptoms of 
of her own dark past raising its ugly head or something more. So it sounds like the psychologist borders the lines of what is ethical. And that sounds like it's gonna be an interesting time. <laughs> Next up is another book from Ashley Winstead, and that is The Last Housewife. This one is a pitch black thriller about a woman determined to destroy a powerful cult and avenge the deaths of the women taken in by it, no matter the cost. So we've got a couple cult books on the radar next year. I heard Ashley Winstead talk about this book when she did a live show with the Late Night Book Club, and she said this one is much darker than In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, and she really likes exploring the dark side of the human psyche. So I'm really interested to try out another book from her. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife wasn't my favorite thriller of the year, but it was still like a good book so I'm definitely excited to pick up something from her again and lastly in August we have Stay Awake by Megan Golden who I have not read from before but I am interested to try her out this follows a woman who wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is or how she got there she gets dropped off at the door of her apartment and a stranger answers a stranger who now lives in her apartment and forces her out in the cold she reaches for her phone to call for help but then she discovers it's missing and in its place is a blood-stained knife that's when she sees that her hands are covered in black pen scribbled messages like graffiti on her skin. Stay awake. That sounds so fun and exciting. I really am looking forward to this one and hopefully I enjoy it because I know this author has a couple other books that I could go back and read if I do. I also have a couple honorable mentions. These are thriller books that are on my radar. They're not the ones I'm the most excited about, but they're definitely ones that I will be keeping an eye out for. So I will just show you those all here. We have The Accomplice, The Paradox Hotel, Catch Her When She Falls, The Night Shift, The Long Weekend, Portrait of a Thief, My Summer Darlings, Can't Look Away, We Lie Here. And according to Goodreads, Samantha Downing has an untitled book coming out next year. So if that happens, it will be on my radar. Next, we can move on into my most anticipated horror books of 2022. The first one coming out in January is Devil House by John Darnielle. This says, Gage Chandler is descended from kings. That's what his mother always told him. Now he is a true crime writer with one grisly success and movie adaptation to his name. He gets offered the chance to move into this house called the Devil House, which is where notorious murders have happened. And then he gets pulled into horrifying chaos from there. Next up is Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. I think the cover of this one's super interesting. This is said to be a stunning supernatural thriller set in Siberia where a film crew is covering an elusive ghost story about the Kolyma Highway, a road built on top of the bones of prisoners of Stalin's gulag. I've been noticing film crews come up more often in thrillers and horrors recently, so that's seeming to be a new kind of trend that is popping up, so excited to check this one out. Next up coming out in February is Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin, and can we just take a moment moment to appreciate the cover of this one. This says it is a explosive post-apocalyptic novel that follows trans women and men on a grotesque journey of survival. I think this one is coming out from Tor. Well, it says Nightfire. Yeah, which is Tor. I really love Tor stuff. It says this is a timely, powerful response to every gender-based apocalypse story that failed to consider the existence of transgender and non-binary people from a powerful new voice in horror. So I'm super excited for this one. Next up coming out in March is Sundial by Katriana Ward. I read from Katriana Ward this past year with The Last house on Needless Street and it was definitely an interesting story. Not my favorite but it was definitely a good book so excited to check out another one from her. This one is a new twisty psychological horror about a mother and daughter who are embarking on a dark desert journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Paul Tremblay says this is a wild twisted family gothic unlike any you've read before and one you won't soon forget. Next up I really want to try out Jennifer McMahon next year so she has a book coming out called The Children on the Hill and this is said to be a genre defined new novel inspired by Frankenstein. It brilliantly explores the eerie mysteries of childhood and the evils perpetuated by the monsters among us. This one looks like it has dual timelines in 1978 and 2019. There's also a podcast element and the cover of this one is very intriguing. So definitely want to check out Jennifer McMahon's stuff next year. Either we'll start with this one or maybe The Winter People because I own that one and The Drowning Kind. I should probably read the stuff I have first, but either way I'm very intrigued that this was inspired by Frankenstein. So I definitely want to check this one out. Next up is Hide by Kirsten White. This is the same author of one of my favorite books of 2021, which was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein 
design and this one sounds a little bit darker. It is a high stakes hide and seek competition turning deadly in this dark thriller. There's a challenge to spend a week hiding in an abandoned amusement park and don't get caught. You can win a bunch of money for that. And then people begin disappearing one by one and things get sinister. So this one sounds like it's got a fun little competition games element. The cover is creepy as heck and I'm excited to just read from this author again and see what she's got up her sleeve next. Next up also coming out in May is Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel and this one definitely pulled me in with this cover. It is very interesting. This is about a girl who last saw her cousin on the night she escaped the cult that they were raised in. For the past two decades she's been working hard to build a normal life but then when her cousin suddenly reappears she regains the only true friend she's ever had. She is soon spending more time with her and her wealthy work friend Friends. This woman's made a fortune in the fertility industry, apparently. And the more she gets immersed in her world, the more disconnected she feels from her life, triggering memories, confronting terrors of childhood. I don't know, but like, wow, so many cult books coming out next year that are on my radar. This is very interesting, especially because I didn't really enjoy the past couple of cult books I read. Hopefully I like these better, but just interesting how that is resurfacing so much. Next up coming out in June, we have Screams from the Dark, 29 Tales of Monsters and the Monstrous, which is a anthology collection featuring 29 all original tales of monsters from best-selling and award-winning authors edited by Ellen Datlow, one of the top editors in horror. Some of the authors in this one include Stephen Graham Jones, Richard Cadry, Cassandra Call, Gemma Files. So some of these I've read from in the past, some of them I haven't, but it's a collection coming out from Tor and I really enjoy short form horror. So I think this could end up being something I really enjoy, at least fingers crossed, hope so. Moving on to July, the first book in July is Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This one has a super stunning cover. This one follows a woman and her mother. The woman goes to move back in with her mother. I think her father was a serial killer. And then there's a parasitic artist who's moved into their guest house out back and then these notes start appearing around the house in her father's handwriting so it sounds really spooky and really good i hope it lives up to the anticipation i have for it the echo wife definitely didn't but hopefully this one i can enjoy more next up in july another stunning cover what moves the dead by t kingfisher this is a gripping and atmospheric retelling of edgar Allan poe's classic the fall of the house of usher i read that story back in college i think and i remember enjoying it. I don't remember anything about it, so I'm gonna have to spruce up my knowledge before reading this one, but... You're following a retired soldier who receives word that their childhood friend is dying. So they race to the remote countryside to go see their childhood friend. And what they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark pulsing lake. The woman is sleepwalking. She's speaking in strange voices and the guy must unravel the secret of the house of Usher before it consumes them all. Next up, another author that I'm giving a third chance. I can't remember how many things I've read from him. <laughs> that is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This one says that Grady Hendrix takes on the haunted house in a hilarious and terrifying new novel that explores the way your past and your family can haunt you like nothing else. And that's all we've gotten about this book so far. This is the only cover I've seen. I don't know if this is the final cover, but the title really just pulls me in and I love a haunted house story. So I'm gonna give Grady Hendrix another chance. We'll see if I enjoy this one. If not, I might be done with Grady Hendrix. I don't know, we'll have to see. But hopefully it's better than the others that I've read from him. Next up in July is The Ruin by Phoebe Wynn. This is a feminist gothic coming of age tale with shades of Patricia Highsmith, Rebecca, and Atonement pitched against the sun-soaked backdrop of a summer holiday on the French Riviera. That very much sounds like Rebecca to me, which I was not able to get all the way through because I didn't really enjoy it. So I hope I like this one more. I know this author also wrote this book called Madam in the last couple of years that is very hit or miss for people. So I imagine this one will also be kind of hit or miss, but I'm always interested in a feminist gothic tale. So we'll give it a try and see how it goes. And then finally in July, we have The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. This is a cleverly voiced psychological thriller about an unforgettable and unsettling friendship with blood chilling twists, crackling wit, and a thrumming pulse in its veins. This one follows a guy who ends up writing a memoir about The Paul Bearers Club, but somehow his friend gets her hands on it and she's got issues with it and now she's making cuts. It says it is seamlessly blurring the lines between fiction and memory, the supernatural, and the mundane. It is an immersive, suspenseful portrait of an unforgettable and unsettling friendship. I really liked Paul Tremblay's stuff in the past. I haven't read it all. I've read, I think, just one book from him, but I really liked it. So I'm looking forward to checking out another book from him. And then I have a couple of on my radar honorable mentions for horror as well next year. And those are The Honey 
20s we spread and this book called leech that i have seen is going to come out from tour but it doesn't have an expected publication month it just says 2022 by Hiran inez so i don't know it's on my radar we'll see if it ends up coming out Next up, we can talk about my most anticipated romance books of 2022. The first one is called Anatomy, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. And this is said to be a gothic tale full of mystery and romance about a woeful female surgeon, a resurrection man who sells bodies for a living, and the buried secrets they must uncover together. It's set in 1800s Edinburgh, and it just sounds like a fun time. I love a good gothic story. It sounds like it's going to be primarily romance, so that's why I put this in this category instead of thriller or horror, but it definitely sounds like it's going to have a little bit of spooky elements, a little bit of a mystery. And I think the cover is really cool too. Next up coming out in January is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is a story about these co-writing literary darlings who wrote these books together until they hit a plot hole that turned their lives upside down. Three years ago, they were the brightest stars on the horizon. Their co-written books were always topping bestseller lists, but then something happened and now they don't speak anymore. They're both facing crossroads in their personal and professional lives and they end up back in their tiny Florida town together trying to finish up a manuscript and then it sounds like they're gonna end up falling in love together too so this one reminds me of a little bit of beach read because it's these two writers working together and a little bit of people we meet on vacation because they got pulled apart and now they're coming back together and a little bit of a friends to lovers kind of story so super excited to check this one out next up in January is reminders of him by Colleen Hoover I was a huge Colleen Hoover fan in my teen years I don't know if I am anymore and so this is going to be a little bit of a deciding factor. I'm excited to check this one out and see if I still like her books or if maybe they're just not for me anymore because the most recent ones that have come out I haven't really enjoyed them as much except for Layla and Verity. I like the darker weirder stuff she's doing but the regular contemporary romance stuff just isn't my thing anymore from her. This one says a troubled young mother yearns for a shot at redemption in this heartbreaking yet hopeful story. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter, but the bridges she burned are proving impossible to rebuild. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her is this guy named Ledger Ward, a local bar owner. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. I hope I love it, but I am a little skeptical of it just because her most recent stuff hasn't been my favorite, but I'm gonna give it a try. We're gonna see, maybe it will pull me back into loving her books again. Next up coming out in February is One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. I have not read from this author before, but I've heard good things about her books. And this one sounds really cute and fun. It follows this woman named Cleo who is spending her 30th birthday alone. She is a dating columnist and she is going on a self-coupling quasi sabbatical at the insistence of her boss. In the name of re-energizing herself and adding a new perspective to her column, she goes to a remote Irish island and then ends up encountering this guy named Mac, who is also looking forward to getting some time away from himself, but they accidentally double booked the place. And so they end up getting stuck together in this one bedroom hideaway at the same time in this quaint little Irish island. It sounds really charming and fun. It comes out in February, but it sounds like it's gonna be a good summer read. So it might be something I save for the warmer months, but either way, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Next up coming out in March is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle or Surley. I have read from this author before. I really enjoy in five years from this author previously. So I'm excited for this one. It follows a woman whose mother dies and they had planned a two week vacation to Positano, a town where her mother spent the summer right before she met the father of the girl. So she decides to still go even after the passing of her mother. And then she ends up seeing her mom there in the flesh, healthy, suntan and 30 years old. She doesn't understand what's happening or how, but it follows the course of their summer together in Italy when she gets the chance to meet a younger version of her mom. Mom. So this one really reminds me of Faye Far Away, which I have not finished reading yet. I'm still in the middle of that one. But I just love these stories that have a very real world setting with a little bit of a magical twist to them. I know I've liked this author's stuff in the past, so I think this one sounds like a beautiful read. 
Next up coming out in April is Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. This is the same author of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and she's coming out with a romance novel next year. So I'm really interested to try this one out. It says, in this fierce and funny battle of the exes, Ashley Winstead's Fool Me Once explores the chaos of wanting something you used to have. I heard this author talk a little bit about this story in the live show that she did with the Late Night Book Club. And so I'm excited to see what a romance book looks like from her and how it explores like the darker side of people. I don't know, I really have no idea what to expect, but I think it'll be a fun time. Time. Next up coming out in April is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. The story follows three women who have these three different dates with this one guy and he just doesn't show up to any of these dates. I don't know if they end up getting together to investigate the man or if they're all on their own kind of separate journeys, but if they do all get together, it sounds like a good kind of remix to John Tucker Must Die, which was one of my favorite movies growing up. So it sounds really cute. I know a lot of people love Beth O'Leary's stuff. I haven't read anything from her yet, so I'm excited to check her out. And this one sounds like the perfect book to begin with. Next up coming out in May, my most anticipated romance book of the entire year next year is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I've definitely been hit or miss with Emily Henry's adult romances. I did not really like Beach Read. People We Meet on Vacation was one of my favorite romance books ever. So it could be a hit or miss as well with this one, but it sounds like something I'm going to enjoy. It says one summer, two rivals, a plot twist they didn't see coming. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves i love a good serendipitous story i love the last thing i read from emily henry so i'm just hoping fingers crossed this is another five star from her also coming out in may is something wilder by christina lauren this is a charming and laugh out loud funny novel filled with adventure treasure and of course love this page turning adventure full of second chances complicated relationships and the breathtaking beauty of the american southwest will take fans on one wild ride. Christina Lauren's also an author that's hit or miss for me. So I don't know, I might end up hating it, but I'm excited to pick up another one of their books. This one sounds like it's going to have a fun deserty atmosphere, which is just something a little different from what I typically read. So definitely looking forward to picking this one up. And then the last romance book that is super high up on my radar doesn't really have a published date. It just says expected for next year from Simon and Schuster. And that is Dream On by Angie Hockman. So I don't know if this is going to come out next year or when it's going to come out, but it's definitely on my radar. It says, what would you do if your dream man turned out to be real? It follows a law student who wakes up after surviving a car accident and she is flooded with memories of her boyfriend, Devin. The only problem is Devin doesn't exist, but everything she remembers about him feels so real, but everyone in her life, friends, family, doctors are like, this man did not exist. You did not have a boyfriend named Devin. And then she ends up running into the real Devin a year later in a Cleveland flower shop. And she is completely shocked and they end up developing a real life romance together. I love the cover of this one. I love the last book I read from Angie Hawkman, which was shipped. That one was so much fun and a great summer book. So I hope this one ends up coming out early in the year next year. I hope it comes out at all next year. I don't know. It's still kind of TBD, but it'll definitely be high up on my radar. And then some other honorable mentions or romance books that are just on my radar that I might pick up are Weather Girl, I Kissed Shara Wheeler, and Love in the Time of Serial Killers. Next up, we can chat about my most anticipated fantasy books of 2022, both of which are coming out in June. The first one is not a surprise. It is the sequel of a series that I started this year. And this one is called A Mirror Mended by Alex E. Harrow. This is the follow up to A Spindle Splintered. This series is being called the Fractured Fables series. The first one was a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. This one follows the same character after the events of the first book. And in this one, she encounters a magical mirror and it involves the evil queen from Snow White. I really enjoyed the first one. It was a five star read for me. So I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel. And then the other fantasy book I'm really looking forward to is called We All Fall Down by Rose Zabo. This is the beginning of a duology called the River City duology. And I really loved what I read from Rose Zabo last year, What Big Teeth. This is going to be a dark fantasy YA duology about the power and danger of stories and the untold cost of keeping magic alive. Perfect for fans of Aiden Thomas and Marie Rutkowski. It follows four young queer people who are struggling with the daily hazards of life, not realizing that they have been selected to play in an age-old drama that revives the flow of magic through their world. When a mysterious death rocks their fragile peace, the four are brought into each other's orbits as they uncover a deeper magical conspiracy. Devastating, gorgeous, and utterly unique, We All Fall Down examines the complex network of pain created by power differentials, even between people who love each other, and how it is possible to be queer and turn out just fine. I really love the first thing I read from Rose Bow, so really looking forward to trying out something else from 
them. This sounds very different, but hopefully I enjoy it just as much as I liked their previous standalone novel. And then the rest of the fantasy books I have to talk about are more just on my radar. They're not the tippy top of what I want to read. I haven't been as in the mood for fantasy lately, and I'm not planning to read as much fantasy next year. So these are just on my radar. If I feel like picking them up, if they get great reviews, I might end up picking them up. And those are A Far Wilder Magic, Gallant, Book of Night, Our Crooked Hearts, Belladonna, and The Ones We Burn. And finally, the last section I have to talk about is just other books that I'm highly anticipating across the literary fiction, speculative, sci-fi genres, just kind of everything else. There's only two that I'm really highly anticipating and then the rest are just on my radar. So I'll talk about those two first. The first one is coming out in June and it is called Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno. I have really loved everything I've read from Katrina Leno. So I'm really looking forward to another story from her. I believe this one is for a little bit of a younger audience. So I don't know how that's gonna work out for me. It says it is a tender love letter to books and summertime with a touch of magic. And that is my favorite thing that Katrina Leno does is write books with just a touch of magic that are so beautiful. And so I hope I can love this one too. I hope it's not a little bit too young for me, but if it's anything like our other books, I should love it. And then the other book I'm highly anticipating is coming out in July and it's called Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. The previous book I read from Margarita Montemore is one of my all-time favorites, Una Out of Order, so I'm really looking forward to having another book from her. This one follows an iconic magician named Violet Volk who performed her greatest trick yet nearly a decade ago when she vanished mid-act and she hasn't been seen ever since, but the public imagination is still really strong around her. And then then you're following her sister Sasha who was always the responsible one but she can never seem to escape her sister's orbit. There's a podcast, there's sleepwalking, there's emotional things going on. I don't know. I really don't want to know too much about it. I just want to be surprised because Una Out of Order was a huge surprise for me and I loved it so much and I really can't wait to pick up another book from this author. And then the other books in this other category that I have on my radar are To Paradise, How High We Go in the Dark, The School for Good Mothers, Ophelia After All, The Lifeguards, Sea of Tranquility, and You Made a Fool of death with your beauty. So that is it for all the books I have to talk about. I've been talking forever. That was a million books. I'm so tired, but there are so many books I'm so excited for next year across so many different genres and there's no way I'm going to get to them all, but I am going to get to as many as I can and hopefully find some new favorite books along the way. Let me know if there are any books that I didn't mention that are on your most anticipated list that I should put on my radar as well. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!